So, Monta Dunkel and feels like you're at the top of the world up here. It's a natural stadium, one of the most beautiful sights I've ever seen in sport. It's cloudy, chance of possible rain. Same sort of weather, really, that we've had in the last couple of times we've been up here. 2010, when Ivan Basso won, went on to win the Giro d'Italia. Igor Anton, just in front of eventual winner Alberto Contador, who, of course, then had to give it up to Michele Scarponi. That's in 2011. Anton riding today, lots of riders riding who have been up the Monte Zoncolan, and this is like nothing that we really have ever seen before in the world of cycling. Gibo Simoni won the first ascent, that was from the easier side. This time, and ever since the second ascent, we've been up since Silvado. Gradients up to around 22%. Simoni then, first time up, that was from the other side of the road. Michael Pantani riding his last ever Giro there. Stefano Gazzelli came third, I think, Pantani in fifth place. Miroslav Popovic on the podium of the Giro that year. But it's the way it's set up naturally. It is a beautiful, beautiful arena. This was the first ascent from Alvaro, 2004. Simoni coming across the line with Piepoli and then Schleck in third place. But 2010, Ivan Basso hadn't won a bike race for four years since he'd won at Aprika. He'd had uh, timeouts, he'd been suspended. He came back, though, won on Zoncolan, and that was the path to victory for him as he took the win ahead of Cadell Evans. We were back the year before as well. Evans winning in 2010. And this happened 12 months later. Igor Anton was the last winner on Monte Zoncolan. Today he rides as a domestique for the man who's expecting to win the Giro and the man who will be expecting to try and win things today. Almost two and a half hours into Monte Zoncolan. We have a breakaway out there. We have uh, Mick Rogers in there. We have Nicholas Roach as well. Full composition with Axel Domont of Agia Desert, Franco Pellizzotti and Jackson Rodriguez of Androni Giocattoli. Funny that Jackson Rodriguez was actually in the break back in 2010 when uh, we last ascended Mont Monte Zoncolan, or I should say the penultimate uh, ascension of Monte Zoncolan. That was the year before Anton. Franco bon, Francesco Bongiorno, pardon me, for Bardiani is there. Martin Cholinghi, Brent Bookwalter, Maxime Monfort, Mattia Cataneo, Daniele Rato, Jonathan Monsalve, Yuyika Arashiro, Simon Geske, Georg Preidler, Ricardo Zoidl, Danilo Hondo, Mick Rogers, Nicholas Roach, Dario Cataldo yet again, and yet again, Maxime Belkov. So this is the story, 66.1 kilometers to go. Chalaput attacking out of the Maglia Rosa group as well. Maglia Rosa group at the minute will be keen to keep it calm because Sean Kelly alongside me, today's a day where teams don't really matter when you get to the Monte Zoncolan. It's about man versus man and this is heroic for whoever can win it. Yes, uh, it's going to be man against mountain, I think, to get <laughs> up this one. When you see the, uh, the gradient on the Zolk, Zonkalan, uh, you know, it's just uh, a killer of a climb there. Uh, it goes on for five kilometres as well, and uh, you know, it's all about again, you know, um, how much you've recovered from the big effort yesterday and from three weeks of racing. And we see yesterday, you know, some uh, started to show little signs of. I think uh, that tiredness is coming in there, and today is going to be. A day, if you lose 50 metres, it can be 30, 40 seconds because, you know, it's just you're going to be at such, at such a slow rate on this gradient and that is the difficult one. If you get into difficulty at all, well, you know, you can lose just a stack of time here in the final uh, two, three kilometres. And uh, with the general classification, you know, quite a shake-up yesterday and uh, will we see, see more of a move today? The um, podium, it looks uh, like uh, di difficult to see, but you never know because of this gradient, anything is possible. Anything is possible. This is the 97th Giro d'Italia. This is the latest we've ever had Monte Zoncolan in the Giro. Penultimate stage, the last big GC stage. Whoever is in the pink jersey tonight, barring an incident or accident, an absolute disaster tomorrow, they will be the winner of the Giro. 100 kilometers into the race today. On the way up the Paso del Pura. First of three climbs. I think about the Zoncolan, it's hard enough if you take it on. If that's the only riding you're doing in the day, it is absolutely brutal. But 
we've got a first category climb, another second category climb as well, and then that sort of uh, approach into the gates of hell. They've got a big banner up there saying, welcome to hell. This is where we're going, starting from Maniago in the Friuli region today, by the way, home of the likes of Pelizotti and uh, Gasparotto. Another region where they have their own dialect and own language, own food as well. Lots of polenta and grilled meat at the top. Monte Zongolan is an absolute killer. Just about the hardest climb in world cycling. Sean, taking this on is hard enough on its own, but of course, after all they've done over the last three weeks and all they've done today, if you're really on a bad day, you're going to suffer and lose a heck of a lot of time. Yes, well, you can lose a stack of time. And, uh, you know, the uh, you get to the end, uh, the final climb, the Zonkalan, 10k to go. Uh, it's going to be uh, so difficult for everybody because of the gradient. And uh, the general classification, men, is going to be, you know, real concern here. The top three, certainly the top five, uh, are going to be concerned that, uh, you know, the do not get into difficulty in the end of the stage. The other thing as well, you know, with the gradient here, uh, mechanical problems as well. If you have a mechanical problem at all to get moving again alone, uh, it's going to be a difficult one. And of course, we uh, we look at that later. The cars are not allowed up. They've been serviced by motorbikes in the final number of kilometres here. So a mechanic will have to get back, get on the back of motorbikes. We'll see all that later on. But for example, you know, the gradient, the pressure here on the riders, you could break a chain. And we, uh, we know about that from yesterday. And um, we'll talk about that a little bit later on. But if you break a chain and to get moving again, if you know, if your motorbike and your mechanic is not close by, you can lo lose so much time. And the possibility of doing that because of this gradient, you know, 20, what, 22% uh, at times, 20%. So um, that is, you know, real serious stuff. And everybody will be concerned. And uh, you're just hoping that uh, you have a cover from yesterday, the general classification, man. That is the other thing. The big effort yesterday you put in that you recover fully because if you're a little bit under, uh, you can lose quite a lot. But we see Quintana yesterday very dominant again and looking so good. And when he had to you know, go a little bit faster in the final number of kilometres, he was able to do that to win the stage. Nicholas Roach at the front. This is the breakaway, 19 riders, we're told. There's Francesco Manuel Bongiorno in the second place there for Bardiani in the green. Roach, the Irishman in the yellow and blue. And just an Axel Domont is up there, Asher de Zare, continuing with their tactic of making sure they place men in the break. The Mega Farmer quick step have uh, looked to have got a man in there as well. Looks like Peter Seri to me. We weren't informed of that prior to coming on there. But certainly a jersey in there. This is Chalapur. Thing is slow for the breakaway here, Sean. It took quite a while to go today, as you'd expect. Nervous day, busy day, the last big day of effort for most teams, unless, of course, you're a sprinter and you're thinking about tomorrow. It's uh, not a great gap, is it? Not even three minutes at the minute. No, um, that's, it's under three minutes, and that is going to be the difficult one. And we can see here, you know, riders attacking, of course, uh, Colombia. They haven't anybody in the break, so they're going to try, you know, up the pace here and uh, get across to this breakaway. This big number of riders out front, and we can see more riders coming across here, and that is looking uh, difficult then for the breakaway to pull out any advantage. The only way they're going to do it is the peloton really slow down and you know, went along at a, at a very slow pace, which is rare in this race. We have seen it very few times and it's, it's not happening here at the moment. So that advantage for the, uh, the breakaway, it's not looking, uh, not looking solid at the moment, which is just 63 kilometres to go. 63 kilometres equates to a lot of time on today's stage, though. Certainly with the Zonkel and we'll get there. There'll be 10 k's left. I can say that will be nowhere near the end of the race. There's Dario Cataldo again in the break. Going over, wants to try and uh, get some mountains classification points. He's going to take uh, Jonathan Mans Monsalve, pardon me, with him. Say a word for Cataldo in particular. I'll tell you what, he's been trying and trying and trying. He was on Italian TV the other night. In fact, he's been trying that much that presenters are cheering for them in public. They want him to get something, they're desperate for Sky to get something, and hats off for him to try. Yes, certainly hats off to Cataldo, he's just been so uh, aggressive in this final week, you know, in, in long breakaways, um, the day of the big mountain stage, uh, the bad weather conditions out in front there on his own, and, you know, many other times he's been out there and just uh, unlucky at times not to have uh, be able to get a stage victory, but... 
But the way he's riding this final week, he's has a fabulous fin end of Giro here. The form he's on, it's really on top shape. Dario Cataldo then in the black and blue of Team Sky, Abruzzese riser, who comes and rides for Team Sky. Monsalve on his wheel. He was a man who, before the Giro, was saying that he really wanted to have a go at the man's classification prize. I think there was a certain political element about this. I'm the one closest. Can I go and take the points? Because there was a conversation before those two guys went out. Nobody seemed to mind uh, behind in the break. Belkov is going to come over and take third place. First category, so 32 points to the man who came across first, Dario Cataldo. Cataldo with 86 points before today. I think doing the maths, Arredondo's more or less secure anyway. Chalapud on the attack for Colombia. The most well-worn phrase of this year, anybody on the attack for Colombia. Colombians winning back to backstage at the Giro for the first time yesterday. Of course, we're talking about nationality, not team. Nairo Quintana saying that uh, yesterday was one of the most beautiful days of his life. And it was a real spectacle of cycling, wasn't it, Sean? We saw so many people up there. It was a Friday afternoon. There were a few sneaky sick notes, I think, off work at lunchtime yesterday to go and stand on that mountain, Monte Grappa, and we saw some fantastic racing. Yes, well, of course, uh, mountain time trial uh, for the viewers and the spectators. It's a great uh, opportunity to see the riders close up and going quite slow, uh, considering when you go out on the stage where it's a flat and the bunch come by at, you know, 50 plus kilometres per hour, you don't get a chance to recognise only a handful of riders where they are. They were coming by individually and they're going, you know, at a, at a pace you could, you know, recognise the riders and get a really good view of them. And that's why we had so many people out there yesterday. And... Uh, you know, we, when you look at the stage yesterday, it was uh, a real good day for some. For others, it was uh, a bit of a struggle and losing a lot of time. And, uh, you know, that's the way time trialling is. It's, uh, it's, it's the true story. It's the man against watch. And the newspaper prepared, did Chalaput. Under the chest to protect himself. Certainly doesn't want to get ill overnight now. And have to pull out on the final day of the Giro. That would be a nightmare. And spare a thought for Kenny, thought rather me, for Kenny de Haas. You mentioned it before, Sean. Snap two chains yesterday. No support vehicle behind him. No neutral support anywhere near as well. Of course, they'll only have the wheels anyway. And he's been given out of time by the Giro organizer. It's a bit harsh, isn't it? Yes, it sounds very harsh when you, uh, you know, when you consider. In a time trial, you know, the uh, team car is not behind every rider because it's not possible. So, it's the, you know, the better riders in the team, the ones who are for general classification, uh, the best in general classification, the team car follow. And then there's, you know, a private car which follow. And yesterday we see a number of them. And normally the team, they just give a pair of wheels at the start. And then when the car comes in, there's another uh, person from the team who collects them there. So you haven't got a spare bike. And, you know, uh, when you break a chain uh, at this stage in the race, you would expect the commercials, you know, to, you know, uh, um, uh, make a special, uh, uh, make something special of that, and allow them back into the race. And it's surprising that they haven't, uh, they haven't done it. And you know, we hear that he is not very happy, and I'm not, I'm not surprised at all because, uh, you know, he, sh he should be allowed back into the race. I think, you know, they, 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 they've been very, very, they've been very, very strict and very, very heavy-handed on the riders in this race. Well, the gap has gone up, almost. Uh... I should say just above three and a half minutes. Fran Bentorso is going to leave Movistar over the climb. Heliton over the Paso del Pura. First obstacle of the day is done. We've got short descent now to take the race to the dam of the Sorry Lake. Then we'll go upwards once more for the ascent of the 15 kilometer long Celarazzo, all coming up here on Eurosport Cycling. Stage 20 of the Giro d'Italia, it is mighty Zoncolande. Front of the race looks like this so far. We've had 19 men in a break. At the minute, that's all splitting up, and perhaps we'll come back down together once they finish this descent. We've been over the Paso del Pura. This is the dam where the uh, race reaches now, then. Was that a crash, or was that a mechanical? 
didn't get much chance to have a see. We've got two Tinkoff Saxo riders in the break. Nicholas Roach and Mick Rogers. Looks as though one of them has come a cropper there as we come down to the Sorries Dam. Absolutely stunning scenery around here. Sleepy mountain regions that are brought to life by the Giro d'Italia. We've had 2003 from uh, Sutrio, but ever since, from Ovaro, Gibo Simoni, Ivan Basso, Igor Anton, who will be the latest to write their name in now? What happened here? Looks like Mick Rogers to me. Not happy. And the way that it's going, Sean, break doesn't have a great advantage. It's going to be hard work for him. Yes, it is going to be very hard work for the breakaway. We can see back in the peloton the uh, the action is starting already, and uh, you know we see there that uh, uh, the advantage at the moment with you know, that 56 minutes to go, they you know they should have eight or ten minutes at the moment uh, if they had got away in the early part of the of the race. But of course, uh, you know the 480 kilometres pretty flat, and uh, I think uh, again difficulty for anybody to get away. So many teams wanted to be in the breakaway today, and it just goes on and on onto the break get away and then you know you're pretty much into these into this the halfway stage of the race and uh, then when you're in the climbs of course there's, there's teams who will set the pace of course pink jersey mobistar will set a pace in the front but we see a lot of riders attacking back in the peloton and that's uh, you know that's going to upset uh, the pace that mobistar would like to, you know just calm things down take it easy on the uphill on the downhill also we've seen them doing that the last number of days as we can see here at the peloton they're still doing it leading down here but we did see there were some riders in between I'm not sure if they've been pulled back or they at uh, the chase and the big breakaway out front, but uh, it's certainly you know not as calm back in peloton as we would expect it to be. And with 56 kilometres to go, this advantage of around four minutes, uh, it's not looking good for the breakaway. Although a big breakaway, it's a good thing, but the, the gap is not that big to hold on out front. And again, once we get that final climb, it's all about individuals, isn't it? Nothing to do with teams really. Teams cannot help you. Everything in every previous edition of the Zonkalan really has been smashed apart as soon as we got onto the big slopes. He'll be hoping to be right at the front when it comes to the top. Fabio Aru, what a performance he has put in. Plenty of support for the Sardinian on the side of the roads. Can he put those above him in trouble? Rigoberto Uran. There's some really good previous with Rigoberto Uran, Movistar, and a pink jersey losing three minutes on this. Monte Zoncola, and I'm thinking back to 2010. Man in pink was David Arroyo, was riding for Kestepon, which is now Movistar. Rigoberto Uran was a domestique of uh, David Arroyo then. They lost over three minutes. Ivan Basso didn't do enough to take the pink on that stage, but of course, he got himself into the Giro d'Italia. Movistar's director, sportifs and owners will be thinking back to that, as will Rigoberto Uran. It's a big, big ask today, and it would require Nairo Quintana to have a performance that has nothing to do with the excellent form he's shown this week. But there is previous. In the meantime, let's look ahead to Fabio Aru's performance. Well, of course, there are two very important stages remaining. I've learned over the years that, of course, uh, stage races finish after the final stage. You've got to be very, very careful and very, very alert all the way to the last pedal stroke. Only 41 seconds ahead of you is the second place. But, of course, I want to give always the maximum, the best of myself. I've still got quite a lot to learn. And I'm very, very happy with this result, as it is at the moment. I'm already thinking about uh, Zonkolan stage. We're here, this is Zonkolan stage. That, by the way, was Fabio Aru talking to uh, our friend Christian Chambre right at the finish line after his fantastic, fantastic performance yesterday. Who's going to win today, guys? We want to know. Hashtag Eurosport Cycling. Let's get it trended. Remember, just two days left of this Giro d'Italia. And at Rob Hatch TV, if you have questions for Sean and myself in the commentary box, we welcome them. Wonderful views. Absolutely spectacular.
all waiting for everything to happen today. We've had the first bits of action on the climb behind. It's building up beautifully to a grand Giro crescendo. Celarazzo is the next climb. As Francesco Bongiorno, this break is starting to come back together. But of course, we've had problems for Mick Rogers already. At the moment, it means Nicholas Roach is the only representative of the Saxo, or the Tinkoff Saxo team. And drawing Giocattoli, best represented with the two riders as well, as are Giant Shimano, Geskin Peidler. Trek Factor Racing with a couple too, Zoidl and Hondo. In the meantime, Movistar just taking their time to make sure that their man is in the right place. Difficult not to spot him. Pink from head to toe. So much so that then back in his native Colombia, they started referring to him as the Pink Panther now, ready to pounce at the top of each of the mountains. Now, they've just slowed up a bit. They've let this advantage go to four minutes 30, and I think that they're quite happy to control things. In the meantime, Movistar, the rest of the team is just going to uh, ensure a natural break, and once they do it, of course, everybody behind will take their opportunity to do so as well. In the meantime, it's a chance for these guys to try and forge ahead, compose themselves into a new group. Who's still there? Well, we'll find out when we come back immediately after this commercial break. Keep it Eurosport cycling. Uh, 52.4 kilometers to go. 15 riders in this group now. A couple of riders dropped off the back. We've seen Danilo Hondo start slipping. Yukia Arashiro as well, as well as Martin Chilingi. Sean, stage 20 of a Grand Tour, not just any Grand Tour, the Giro d'Italia, which is quite unique with all of its mountainous terrain. How are the legs at this stage? Well, some have good legs and some have horrible legs, and uh, that's been going on for a number of days. But as you get, uh, as you get to the end of a three-week race with such a difficult one we've had this final week, well, everybody is uh, starting to you know, feel a bit of fatigue. Uh, it's, it's normal, but uh, it depends on you know, how much and how well you're recovering, and that's something, you know, the... Uh, the big riders who can you know, do, st do the stages, the big favours, let's call them. It's amazing the way that they can recover. And when you see the time trial yesterday, and that's something, you know, if you make a calculation in a three-week tour and the end of it, probably the you know, penultimate day, for example, or you know, in the final couple of days, there's a flat time trial. And the average they can put in over a 50k flat time trial, you know, it's like what the guys can do uh, on a normal flat time trial, just you know, doing a sp specific one event. Uh, like, you know, in the World Championships, they're not too far off you know, the average they do there. So that just tells you how well they are recovering. And then a mountain time trial, of course, is a special one. It's really, you know, down to the uh, the good climbers. And yesterday's one was a real cup of tea for the climbers. You could see that. And uh, it's all about, yeah, the fittest to only survive. Certainly is survival of the fittest today. It's not just man against man, it is man against mountain. And as one of our contributors on Twitter said during the break there, the mountain usually wins. Do you ever get that feeling, Sean? Well, I had that feeling too many times. <laughs> and uh, that is something, you know, if you're not a, if you're not a super climber, uh, but you can get up the climbs, you know, pretty well, well, then you're always going to pay a bit on occasions. And I certainly did that. Um, you know, if you look at... The, the real mountain climbers, Quintana, for example, like a tiny rider, like the, uh, the, the size of him and the weight of him, it's, you know, it's so much easier for him on the climbs, but he can do the rest so well. He can ride on the flat, he can time trial pretty well on the flat, he can limit his losses very well. Uh, you know, he is just uh, one of these super athletes, and uh, that is, you know, a huge advantage then for stages, and that's the reason, you know, he's such, uh, he's becoming a, became a big champion, but now he's confirmed in big time that he can win big tours, and I think, you know, we're going to see him but he's still under 23 uh, classification, he qualifies for that, so we're going to see him for a number of years, and I think you know, Quintan is a name uh, in the big tours, Tour of France and such to come, we will see him very much up there, uh, prob probably winning them. Forza Aru, lots of Sardinias. As I said yesterday, the economic crisis of the last few years in Europe has particularly hit sort of remote Mediterranean regions. We've seen it in Spain and Greece and 
to an extent uh, in southern Italy as well, and in the Mediterranean islands in Sardinia. So many Sardinian immigrants onto the mainland and onto the rest of Europe. They're all over the place. They're here in Friuli, and of course, those who have had the opportunity to travel from Sardinia have not missed this. It's a, an area that, if they've produced sporting stars, they've been footballers. Think of the likes of Gianfranco Zola and the great Cagliari team as well of the 1970s that won the Italian Football League, the Scudetto, and they had a, an adopted Sardinian Riva playing for them. Now they've produced one of their top cyclists, perhaps their best ever cyclist, Fabio Aru, and they really are cheering him on. This is Chalapud and Wellens. Wellens, another word for him, wow. Absolutely wonderful attacking riding from him in this Giro d'Italia. We have some, talking about legs, Sean, some riders with better legs than others. Movistar looking after Nairo Quintana at the minute. Everybody on the second climb of the day here. Celarazzo, 15 kilometers long. It's an average gradient of 5.5%. One man who's been struggling on the climbs in the last few days has been Cadel Evans. Thank you very much. Uh, you keep fighting. Yesterday you still move up by two ranks in the general classification. It's hard this uh, last week. But you keep fighting, and I think it will be the same for you in the Zonkolan, fighting until the very end. Oh, of course, um, <clears throat> no, moving up two places was uh, the day before I conceded seven, so it wasn't really... You know, usually we might like, we take two steps, one step back, we like to take two forward. But um, no, we, we, for myself and the whole team, we really prepared with this Giro with everything, so there's no reason to give up three days from the finish. Obviously, the start... It started better than it's. The first week's been was a lot better for us than what the third week has been. But um, yeah, of course we go to the finish, and the finish is in Trieste, which is still another day away. And um, as we've seen in this year, anything can and will happen. Uh, before Trieste, there is this monster, the Zoncolan. What do you know of the Zoncolan? How can you describe us this uh, this hill, this climb? Um, from my personal experience, the most ridiculously steep short climb there is in the world. <laughs> Thank you. And Cadell Evans does indeed have personal experience. He was in the World Champions jersey when Ivan Basso pulled off that win in 2010. Let's go back to that 2010. In fact, uh, the sad man I am spent quite a bit of time looking <laughs> at the old Zonkolan images last night, just reliving the magic. Remember being on the top of that mountain, seeing Basso come across the line, what a magical sight it was. The break had three and a quarter minutes at the bottom of that climb on that day. I can tell you they didn't last very long. Everybody started playing up behind. Basel won the stage then. And uh, it was basically him and Evans for the majority of the climb. Evans only seeding the advantage with about 3.9 kilometers to go. It's just as they got onto the slightly easier section when Basel was able to just push on. Hardly got out onto the uh, pedals, did Basel, in the seat and seated as he likes to be for the majority of the climb. But on that day, Evans struggled, suffered. You saw it as well, Sean. And, but Basso was really the winner by quite a country mile then, 2010. Yes, well, as uh, mentioned earlier in the programme, if you're a little bit uh, better than the guy you're with or the, or the guys you're with, uh, you can just, you know, ride away from the guy slowly. On that percentage, it just, you know, uh, it just goes, uh, the wheel just goes away from you so slow and you, there's nothing you can do. With the gradient, you're just battling against the climb and uh, it's, all, it's, it's all about, you know, how much, uh, how much they have left today and... Uh, the climbers as well, they're going to be at the advantage. The real lightweight climbers with this percentage being so steep, while well, they are going to, you know, have an... The Verberry brothers having a chat with their uh, boys. In the meantime, can we carry on? Can we push on? Answer's no. <laughs> Movistar are in control. And that is the way that Fran Ventoso wants it to stay. Bottle time in the meantime. Neutral service bike, yes, no, yes, oh, thankfully, we've got it. Simon Geske at the front, the bearded Simon Geske. Ricardo Zoidl, Austrian champion, second wheel, Dario Cataldo third. There's Franco Pellizzotti, looking for uh, Jackson Rodriguez, who seems to have faded from this group. They say he was part of that group that got to the bottom of the climb in 2010 with a three-minute advantage. A year later... It was all about the drama the night before, do you remember that? Monte Crostis, will they, won't they? And in the end, it was 
the talk of the organizers of the bullying from the Saxo Bank team. Alberto Contador didn't want to do the climb months before. In the end, he would get his way. Of course, lots of whispers of unsafe roads, and it was the descent off the crosses that most riders weren't happy. Contador, in the end, was booed over the line as he came second on that day. Vivid memory of that. He was whistled, booed, all the way up to the summit of the Zoncolan. He'd been the most vocal critic of the route. Igor Anton won ahead of Contador, first non-Italian to win after two Gibo Simoni victories and then an Ivan Basso triumph. And look at it, on the left-hand side, crowd is already gathering. The way the road and the hill is put together, it's almost like a natural stadium, just look at that. Amphitheatre, and we can see the Alpini in position again, the Alpine regiment of the Italian army doing their best to protect the fans and the riders alike. And it's an absolute party out there. What a feeling, Sean, as a rider, to come in, into such an arena. You, you come out the last of three tunnels at the top and you get this great, massive roar. And, of course, everybody up there has been on the polenta and grilled meat and a few beers all day. It gets very, very loud, rowdy and vocal up there. Great atmosphere. Well, a huge atmosphere, and uh, you know the, the atmosphere will be just uh, building all day, as you say. You know they're out there uh, on the on the finish uh, climb for such a long time, many many hours. And uh, as a rider, you know when you uh, when you arrive there, although as a rider, you know you're going to be you're going to be so busy trying to get up the climb, you know what's happening around you, but you don't really you know take much notice of it because uh, with the climb being so difficult and the gradient, you know you're going to have to really give it 100 percent to get up it. And uh, certainly if you if you're racing at all, if you're giving the effort. Of course, when you arrive in the group eight on the bus, uh, depending on what the situation is with the time delay and all of that, uh, they might have a bit more time to appreciate the climb. But uh, you know, you know, it's, you know, it's around you there, but you just uh, you you don't get the opportunity to soak it up too much. Certainly, these guys they will be suffering, suffering, suffering. So we wondered if there would be allowed to be another attack at the peloton. There was a bit of political negotiation going on between Colombia and Movistar. Looks as though it has been allowed to go. And we've seen all sorts of attacks all week long. We've seen Pantano asking to be allowed to attack. And here he is. Chalapud is out there. Again, a shake of the head. Six minutes and six seconds. You can tell behind that they're pretty happy to let the break go and do their thing for the minute. But, of course, given how it is on Zonkolan, they need a lot of time, a heck of a lot of time. Remember, this climb at the minute, Celarata, isn't particularly difficult. There is, however, a very, very hard descent here. It's quick, not easy for the smaller guys, and you've got to have very, very good bike handling skills as well. On our way still up the Celarata at the moment, six minutes and four. It was as little as two minutes. Pink parties are everywhere. Domenico Pozzo Vivo, could he be going to one tomorrow? Still chance for a podium. What does he think? Well, I think it's the hardest climb in Europe. Of course, after 20 days of riding, it's ridiculously hard. Well, you did a very, very good time trial yesterday. Uh, you might have lost quite a few hopes of the podium. How do you see it tomorrow? Well, the podium is difficult. I was talking and my objective was top five. Of course, the thing that's missing for me on this year is the victory. And I'll try for that. Well, of course, the problem is that everybody wants to win today. Of course, I think uh, today we're going to see who the real strong climbers are. We saw that yesterday on the time trial. Can Domenico Pozzoviva win on the Zonko Sean? Well, I think, uh, yes. If you look at the way he's riding yesterday, he had a, a, a real good performance, a good time trial. Uh, he is in still very good shape. And uh, in the general classification, of course, uh, you know, he is a bit uh, further off. And if he goes in the attack, uh, Quintana is not going to be worried about him. He's going to allow him to, you know, to go on. And uh, that is, you know, the, uh, I suppose, the advantage. There's He's not a threat to the uh, podium place really at the moment, but again, depending on how the other ones are thinking, because.
because uh, Aru, he could be thinking of this stage as well because he wants to continue on confirming that you know he's a man of the future. He can do a three-week race. He you know, did a great performance yesterday, and if he could win here today, well, then he would be just uh, a god in the sleep. <laughs> <laughs> he's already demigod status. <laughs> and the thing is, what you have to think about is... Uh, we see Pantano not able to make the break from the penalty. He saw Maxim Belkov drifting towards the back, saying, are you coming with me? Belkov's like, no, I had enough of that. Straight back, it's just about making the time limit for me. Pantano was going to be caught. He was allowed to go out. Couldn't get enough of time. So, chasing group of Zardini alongside Wellens and uh, our friend from Colombia, Chalapud. Around halfway there, they've overtaken Danilo Hondo. 6.39, and the way it's going at the minute, Movistar seem pretty happy with what's going on up front. There isn't too much of a threat. There's Martin Chilingi. Well, I think he was listening to us yesterday, Sean. We were saying that we hadn't seen him for a couple of weeks. Well, he's finishing off as he started. <laughs> he started off very well in Belfast on the uh, first two days. So it's the first time we've seen him really on our screens, uh, except on the back of the peloton we have, you know, uh, seen his number a few times, so uh, he's making a move um, here and uh, being a bit more active, and uh, it's surprising. I was expecting to see more of him uh, in this uh, Giro because uh, he started off so strong, looked, you know, be really in good shape in the two stages back in Ireland, and, I, you know, he'd take a bit of a rest maybe two or three days and he'd be in the breakaway again here in Italy, but it didn't happen, and uh, surprising. Now then, this could change the dynamic of things in this race. Guess who's interested? Guess who wants his podium place back? Yes, it's mountain man Pierre Roland. And at Europe car, suddenly say, hang on a minute. Moby Star calming it down a little too much. They go to the front and start to do some work. Pierre Roland, the way he's been climbing, yes. It was an average day for him yesterday. Perhaps not as strong as people thought he might be, but... The differences could be so big if one or two people in the top five, ten have a bad day, Sean, that, yes, you might think on paper that a podium place is impossible, but I tell you what, it's that sort of day where the impossible can happen, isn't it? Yes, well, I think the train is, uh, the train is there to make it uh, uh, possible. And uh, we've seen Europe Car, they have been really uh, also in this race. They have been aggressive as a team. They have started riding long way out and uh, Pierre Roland himself have gone in the, in the attack. So maybe he's thinking of a stage victory, if not moving up in general classification. Quick break for us. We're back in just a moment's time here on the Giro d'Italia. We're ahead of the time limit. We're going very, very fast today, I should say, the time schedule. Some nice uh, Friulian colours there on the left-hand side, blue and uh, yellow. You'll see the Friulian flag a little later on today. Region in the northeast of Italy. And that's where we stay for the last two days. Trieste tomorrow. The chase is on behind. Smoke coming out of there. Barbecue or something going on behind that wall. Had a fear that one of the cars had uh, had a bit of an unfortunate incident then. Or a rider. <laughs> <laughs> overheating. <laughs> we could certainly expect that in the final line. Some riders overheating. <laughs> well, as, as, in all seriousness, as you were saying, we're going to see a lot more motorbikes instead of the cars because if you stall or have a problem, then it's a nightmare getting the car out of the way on some of those gradients and on those roads. You're certainly not going to get it started again. It's a case of even the commissars and the likes of Mauro Veni, Stefano Locchio, most of them will be on the back of the motorbikes and you'll probably see a mechanic or a swanya on the back of a motorbike for the teams as well with a spare bike on his shoulder. We've certainly seen that of the last couple of ascents in the last few years. Yes, we've seen that and I think it's going to be put into action about eight kilometres out. Uh, and um, they have to be in situ as the race come by. It's not a case where a mechanic will start kicking out, getting out of the car following here. He has, they have to be you know, out there waiting as the race come by, and then they're on the motorbikes with a spare bike or with uh, wheels, and uh, they are following on from there to the finish. And it's a long time on the back of a motorbike with a uh, bike on your shoulder for a mechanic. For a mechanic, and. Uh, with the gradient as well, with the riders, you know, maybe slowing up a bit on the motorbike, you know, slowing and then moving off again. Uh, it's not an easy task for the uh, passenger on the rear. And uh, 
just to stay upright at times on the motorbike it's uh, it will be a difficult one it'll be a test of stamina but of course the cars if you stop in some of them places to get going again you know the clutch would not be able to take it and that's the reason they're putting um, the uh, service for the riders to back up on the battle on the rear of the motorbike six minutes all the way back to the Malia Rosa group I tell you what though that chasing group that uh, included the uh, man from Colombia, Chalapub, there, they're doing a great job. Just 20 odd seconds now. Tim Welland is going to be the first to bridge the gap, and they're going to do it before we get to the top of the Celarazzo here. Average gradient of 5%, but we've got a maximum of about 14% here. The gradients when we get to the Zonkol and Sean are going to be stuff completely, completely different to what we've seen in this Tour d'Italia. We've got, of course, that maximum of 22% you talked about. There's a section at 20% as well, but the main difficulty of the Zonkolan comes right in the middle, doesn't it? About two or three kilometres in, we then get six to seven kilometres where the average gradient, yes, average everybody, is above 15%. That is absolute hell, prolonged hell, I have to say, that goes on for a long, long time. You're talking maximum effort, and again, if you're on a slight bad day, it's not going to happen for you. Now, do you use the same gears that we've been using all the way through Istio d'Italia or are you going to have a special cassette on the back and a new ring on the front? Well, that is the question is going about what uh, ratio of gears you will use here. And um, it's interesting to see will there be bike changes because I think compact uh, is the thing for this uh, final climb and uh, for the riders to start out and do all the stages of the compact, I don't think they will do that. So uh, not be surprised if we see a number of riders and a number of teams, cha uh, teams making bike changes here, but, uh, you know, the, uh, the ratio you need, certainly the compact would give you a much better ratio, and it's all about having the gear low enough, because if you're too high on this one, you get, you, you get a little bit into difficulty, and, well, then you're uh, going to have major problems continuing and keeping the gear turning uh, with the gradient, so I'm uh, looking forward to see what way they will work it out here, but... Uh, I'm pretty sure that we should see some riders uh, changing bike. But then again, it's always a risk because if they really race into the climb at a fast rate to make the bike change, it's not an easy thing to do when it's going at 50k an hour. And, you know, you look at the route as we come in here, you're coming downhill uh, off the, uh, the Razo climb, and uh, it's going to be a very fast one. So you're coming into the, into the climb real quickly. So not not in the, a, a section of the valley where you have a flat section of maybe 5 or 10 kilos where you could make a bike change. So it's going to be technically a uh, complicated one. A different approach to the town of Ovaro where the uh, climb begins here. We're talking almost mountain bike gears for some people here. Certainly Super Cadell Evans well as a former mountain biker. He struggled last time up here. Really fought hard though, got a second place. Said afterwards he wasn't on a good day and we heard from the interview that it's just about the hardest, craziest, silliest climb, he called it, in the whole of Europe. Do you... I mean, the overwhelming opinion, it's all about opinions anyway. You know, it's hard to, to say what's hard for somebody is hard for somebody else, but I think, concerning this climb, that it even gets the better of the likes of the Angry Lou and uh, the Mortirolo for most people. For you, is this the hardest climb out there in professional cycling? Yes, I think it's the hardest one. Uh, the angle route, of course, it's a real steep, but, you know, there are sections in it and then it eases a little bit. And uh, we just mentioned a moment ago, you know, the percentage that kicks up to an average of over 15% when you get in just over the two kilometres. And that goes all the way to about seven and a half kilometres. And, of course, you know, at, uh, max out at 22% uh, in a section at about uh, four kil uh, six kilometres from the finish. And then it goes up to a 20% a bit further on. So, you know, the distance with the gradient is, you know, uh, is great here. And it's, as Pozov, as uh, Pozovivo said, it's the, uh, the biggest mountain, I think he called it, in Europe, or the most difficult mountain in Europe. Most riders have been saying that. This is where we're headed. Snow still up here. I think the logistical operation of getting everybody up to Zonkolan is so hard anyway that all the ski lifts and chair lifts are open special passes for organization as well and it takes a long long time to get down in fact the last time i was up there in 2011 we had a huge rainstorm just after the finish and it took us a long long time to get down because the wind was blowing through the valley as well and they actually closed the lift for a while so it was either slide down on your bum if you can through the mud or wait for the lift to reopen we chose the uh, the cleaner option we didn't have a rest day left to do any washing <laughs> Or, and it, or get on your bike and go down by bike and get totally frozen. <laughs> exactly. Now, obviously, 
we wouldn't have been in a fit position to broadcast if we tried to ride up, so we didn't have the bikes there. It took a long, long way to get down. It was an extra plate of polenta and a glass of beer while we were waiting. Almost the top of this Celerata climb. Thanks to our very esteemed colleague, Matt Stevens, for riding into us. Matt watching away, of course. He's been spending time with his other commitments with the Tinkoff Saxo team, and he says, Sean, today that he knows that they're going to use a 34-28 or a 34-32. Mm. Interesting to know how that relates to the other teams. Yes, well, I think... Uh... There'll be a lot of teams on that 34, which is the compact. Um, the normal uh, ratio is the 39 in the ring, uh, so the 34 is the compact. So that, that's that's what we're expecting. And uh, when you make the calculation, the percentage here, uh, they will yeah, certainly need that in this final uh, climb to the finish on, on Zonkaland today. Europe Car have got this advantage now to below six minutes. Looking to set Pierre Alain today. He wants to change things and change things in his favour for that podium position. We've seen great work being done by them all the way through this week. Romain Sicard is the man at the front. Pierre Alonsec a wheel. Sicard, remember, the Basque rider, French Basque country. He used to ride for Euskal Tel Euskal. You see already, Sean, penultimate climb and everything strung out. We certainly didn't expect this. The way things were going 15, 20 minutes ago, that man was just trying to slow things down, give them an advantage, let the brake do their thing, and just rest up for a while. Yes, uh, they were trying to calm <coughs> the ship, but uh, all the riders you know, and teams have uh, different ideas, different tactics, and again, it's Europe car, and what a race they have had, you know, uh, being moved up to uh, Pro Tour status uh, this year, and uh, normally they just concentrate on the Tour of France in the past number of years, and you know have, have had a great Tour of France on many occasions. And first time into the Giro, they are having a fabulous uh, performance as well. They have really opened up the race on a number of stages, and here they are again today from a long ways out, which makes you know really interesting here for us, uh, for the viewers. They make exciting racing, but I think there's a lot of riders in the peloton not too happy there because. We we can see the main peloton is starting to break up and riders losing contacts all the time. Simon Gesky at the front, Gil Pridler just behind him. Remember, he put in a fantastic performance about halfway through the Giro when we went to Savona. Fantastic climbing performance and, of course, dedicated to his late father who sadly died three or four months ago, I think. Five minutes and 23 now, the newspaper's ready. This morning's and yesterday's already red pages of the Gazzetta dello Sport soon to be protecting cyclist chests. Buongiorno is the third rider, by the way. Sardina had already been off the back. Now then, look at this already. Almost down to the favourites at the front. Zoncolan nowhere in sight. We've had more attacks. I think this is Rodriguez on the right hand side. Pierre Roland already making his move. <laughs> it's a long, long way to go yet. Are you surprised to see them making a move before the Zonkolan itself? No, I think uh, Roland, that's the way he does it. We've seen him all through this race. He goes from a long ways out. He knows if he waits to the final climb, he's not going to be explosive enough. And certainly on this one, it's you know so difficult to be explosive. He's a great climber, but he can just work away at it over a long distance. And uh, that's what he's about to do at the moment. Dario Catallo yet again looking for King of the Mountains points. Very close to the top of this climb of the Celerazzo. Penultimate climb of the day, the next one is an introduction to hell itself. Zonkolan coming up, gap at five minutes and ten seconds. This breakaway group has changed and morphed into different compositions as the afternoon has gone on so far. The minute we have five riders ahead of the race. Catallo is there, Monsalve behind. 50 metres to go to the top. There was no competition or contest of the climb points at the top last time. Cataldo goes across again, and he will take maximum points once more. Firmly into second place in the King of the Mountains competition for him. Five minutes and ten, then. Newspaper taken. Everybody wants to stay healthy. 
been a long way and long road to get here. As a few people are pointing out, with all the technology involved in clothing and the way that cycling is going, Sean, it's fantastically old school to see that a page of the Gazette dello Sport can uh, keep somebody healthy. Yes, well, it's uh, it's an old, old one. You know, the piece, the bit of uh, paper under uh, your jersey. Um, it was a thing many years ago, people, when they went out, you know, training in the winter time, if uh, the, uh, the weather was uh, uh, cold especially, uh, if you have real cold weather or cold wind, well, it's amazing what a piece of paper do, and we can still see the guys, you know, in the... Uh, in the big towers, especially here in Italy, uh, with the weather being you know, a bit cooler this time of year when you go up to the altitude. But in the Tour of France as well, we see it a lot of times in the big, big, high altitude climbs where they put a piece of paper on their chest as they go over the top. But a piece of brown paper is uh, a great man uh, on really cold conditions. On a wet day, you know, it gets wet and it breaks up very quickly, but on the dry conditions, it's amazing you know, how good and how much warmer it can keep you. Pierre Alain and Romain Sica have company. Pozzo Vivo Maika. Interesting to see the reaction behind straight away. A lot of leaders almost isolated. Rigoberto Oran doesn't have anybody near. Oran did the domestic duty the last time he was running up uh, Don Colan. A few musettes for the Movistar team. Trying to get some food into their systems. And wow, all these attacks, all this move is really doing a good job to take the gap down. This was the moment that uh, Roland went out there. Quickly followed by Pozzo Vivo and Maika. Movistar and Quintana still have lots of people together. Remember, the great thing for Quintana here, Sean, is that he actually has last time's winner of Monte Zoncola and working for him as a domestique. It's a luxury, isn't it? Yes, uh, well, it is... Uh... Um, a luxury to have a teammate like that and uh, we do talk about um, Mobistar, like they have a real strong team and uh, I think the, uh, they're going to settle in here, they're trying to settle the situation as you can see they still have a number of riders on the front here and um, just walking away at it and uh, they're not going to you know, start reaction, reaction and chasing down these attacks by Roland and by Pozzo Vivo immediately, they're just going to keep on working at, at a, a steadier pace, up it a little bit and uh, you know, try and keep them in the sights. Well, those little attacks have absolutely destroyed the peloton. We're talking 20, 25, 30 riders maximum now. Yes, uh, it's really you know, um, blown the peloton apart. And that just tells you know, how tired, how fat, uh, much fatigue is in the peloton. They're just you know, really suffering, and so many riders really at the end of the pelt. Pots of Evo then, just stretching his legs with 500 metres to go. Eliminating riders and riders and riders. There he is, all in pink. The man who expects to win the Giro d'Italia tomorrow. Maido Quintana. For the moment, all is good. He said he's got today to negotiate and tomorrow to stay upright and enjoy it. Four minutes and 39. Advantage being decimated as well as the peloton as well. Remember, it was uh, almost 700 metres. So Pozzo Vivo, Maika on the right hand side. Still Roman Sica there as uh, Pierre Alain waits alongside the wheel of Rigoberto Uran. Uran, who does finally have company in the shape of Art Pools. 205 there is Pavel Poljanski as well. Fabio Aru, white jersey covered up by uh, the long sleeve jersey to stay warm for the moment. Yes, of course, uh, Roland was on the wheel of Sicard before. Sicard that followed the original acceleration of Pozzo Vivo. On the descent, then. Descent that, if anybody's brave enough, they can get a bit of time on here. It's very, very fast. I'm sure a few people asking, you've actually ridden the top line. Have I ridden the Zoncolan? No, I've never, uh, and I don't intend to do it. As I've said, some of the other climbs, I would not mind doing it, but with the gradient here, there's no uh, way you can get up this one without getting a lot of torture.
Brent Bookwalter and uh, Jonathan Monsalve have decided to try and get out there a little uh, further up. They're on the descent now from the Salarazzo. Three and a half hours in the saddle. Five minutes and 24 ahead of the peloton. All the action starting to kick off behind the Europe car, Azure Desert. Starting to put the pressure on Movistar, who are just happy to let things continue to go. A lot of favourites already without uh, teams around them. Not that it matters too much when you get to the Monte Zoncolan itself. It's every man for themselves, every man against the other man, and every man against the mountain. And the might of the Zoncolan, well, it always has the final say. It is that harsh. It comes an individual fight. Bobby Starve regrouped, taking control here on the descent. Wondering the uh, two teams, remember, to still be complete with their nine riders, Mobi Star and Trek Factory Racing. Five minutes and 29. 33.5 kilometers to finish line, and Sean, it's more or less all out the set now to Ovado itself where the climb starts. And with that, you've only really just got over 10 kilometers to go. 20 k's of descending here. Yes, well over 20 k's of descending, probably 20 k's uh, more to descend here, and we've been sending for a while, but uh, it's only 10 k's. <laughs> yeah, there are 10 difficult k's at the final, and that is going to be uh, a really interesting one. And, uh, you know, five and a half advantage uh, for the breakaway at the moment with Mobistar, you know, taking control of things. But it looks like that, you know, Pierre Roland hasn't... Uh, had his final say yet, he's going to go in the attack. And is this going to be enough? Um, difficult to see that if you arrive to the bottom of it about five minutes uh, that you could hold on out there. Uh, but uh, we can see there that, you know, the uh, peloton is just going down at, uh, at a good rate. Out front, I think they should be able to, you know, hold the advantage if not pull it out if they really push on together out from the breakaway. As Patrick Gretsch at the back of the main group at the minute. He actually set the fastest time on the early part, the first 7.6 kilometres of the time trial yesterday. Nairo Quintana bossing the other sections. 5.37. Monsalbe and Buchwald to have company. Heidler behind them. 5 minutes 36. Just remember... We have remembered already Ivan Basso and Igor Anton. Let's not forget Gibo Simoni, 2003 2004. This is his mountain, really. Pictures of him, you've got the fan club of him, you've even got a plaque erected in his name <laughs> close to the finish line. And finally, after the famous falling out in 2004 and Damiano Cunego going on to take the Giro d'Italia, they had a photograph taken today. It's amazing what 10 years does for a relationship. All friends again. Cunego. The way he's been riding this Giro d'Italia, Sean, it's been uh, a little disappointed. Of course, he has changed as a rider. We didn't expect him to aim to come in to really ride for GC here, but we haven't really seen much of Masri. And with the form he's got at the minute, you can't expect to see much of him today. No, I don't think we will see him when it comes to the final climb today with the main, in the main peloton. Uh, he doesn't have you know, that explosive uh, uh, kick he had uh, you know, back when he won the Tour of Italy and for a number of years. We did see him in a breakaway, but again, the breakaway didn't get the advantage, but he wasn't he, uh, very uh, very good, uh, his performance, when he was in the breakaway. Normally, when he gets to a breakaway, he's one of the stronger riders, and in this Giro, he struggled at the end of the day in the breakaway, uh, so he uh, he's not in his best form. He's quite a bit to do to come back to that level. And to win from a breakaway, he's capable of doing that all the time, but the form he was shown here, I don't think it was good enough to do that. Friends again anyway with Gibo Simoni. The man they actually named Gibo d'Italia. That was his autobiography. Given then in reference to his Giro wins. Tinkoff Saxo have been a big breakaway team in this Giro d'Italia. Nicholas Roach in particular. Mick Rogers already won. They've both been in the breakaway here. Maxim Belkov is up there as well. Both Roach and Rogers in this small group. This is Ardini trying to get back on. Axel Domont as well at the front in the brown. The man at the back is Mattia Cataneo of Lambri Merida. And we're back with the Movistar team. You can just see how long winter has lasted around here. 
Osnowa. Don't know wherever you're watching from, we're getting pictures of Giron in the pub, Giron at home, Giron in the workshop in the shed. Sit yourselves down and settle down because less than 30 k's to go now and it's the might of the Monte Zoncolan, the final mountain stage of the Giro d'Italia. Yes, as that message says, long live il Giro d'Italia. It's been a great race this year. We've had ups and downs, it took its time to get going. The weather's played a big part, but we've had epic moments and as ever, lots and lots and lots of drama. You can still contribute. Hashtag Eurosport Cycling for all your messages, please. At Rob Hatch TV, as uh, the peloton try to negotiate the odd bit of uh, melting snow. Six minutes and five. The advantage going out, of course. Everybody taking a few more risks out there on the descent. Time for another commercial break for us. We'll be back with the mighty Zonkolan straight after these messages. Twenty-six kilometres remain. Kilometres ticking away so quickly right now. We're descending and descending extremely fast down from the uh, Celarazzo. Sun is out and it's Monte Zoncolan day. The day that uh, really gets cycling fans excited. I've been waiting for this day for three years, Sean. It's the place that really, really, for me in particular, gets me excited about cycling. Sitting at the top of the mountain there, watching the riders come across, watching the love that the people have for cycling. This really is the beauty of the Tour of Italy encapsulated in this stage today. Well, it's uh, it's the monument stage to win this for a rider. You know, it's uh, a long time dream, and if he can win this one, it will be remembered. And as you have seen, you know, we have looked back in the past number of years, the guys who have won it, you know, they are just uh, household names in cycling. And today is a day that the riders that are capable of winning here, that has the, uh, you know, the, cli the climbing ability, first of all, to have a chance to get a stage victory, uh, it would be a huge achievement. It's like the Tour of France when you talk about Alpe d'Huez, Zoncolon in the Giro, same situation. Well, it's a mountain that's only coming to the Giro history quite relatively late. We only saw it for the first time 11 years ago, but it has taken over the Giro. It's what everybody talks about now, and finding this mountain certainly was one of the big achievements of the Giro organisers in the last 15 years or so. Not sure many of the riders will be saying that come the finish line today, though. They will be experiencing pure pain. It is suffering all the way through. Good job on the descent doing, being done here by Nicholas Roach. Not afraid to go for it there, is he? And you can see with the numerical advantage, it's gone out by another good minute or so. Yes, and uh, they know out on the breakaway, the riders who are uh, feeling good at this moment with the uh, inside 25 kilometers to go, just under six and a half minutes, they have to push on here and try and now gain as much time as possible because uh, they know on the uh, climb to Azonkoland they will have to have a big advantage uh, to uh, uh, some of the riders back in the breakaway and again I think you know they know that uh, it's a bit nervous back in the peloton we've seen uh, Europe car pushing on the pace and they're going to try and do that again as we lead on to the climb and uh, you know probably some of the other ones AGTR not be surprised as well Pozo Vivo he'll be thinking of getting something out of this race and he did say in our interview you know he came here to win a stage and today is an opportunity for him because you know he's a real specialist in this sort of a finish fifth time that the Giro d'Italia concludes a stage up the Monte Zoncolan six minutes and 25 seconds 23.7 kilometers to go. This time it's Pelizzotti who takes uh, over the running of this group. And a special reason to win himself. And Torino Giocattoli did play up for the stage win when Michele Scarponi was riding for them in 2010. It was the year that uh, Basel won feeling that uh, Scaraponi was third that year. He was then fourth the year after when he moved to Lampre. Remember, Rigoberto Uran, the man who wants to take a lot of time back today, if a miracle were to happen, over three minutes, well, he was the man defending the pink jersey, David Arroyo, the Spaniard, who lost three minutes that day. And, of course, completely different situations, different riders as well, in the way that Quintana has been going in the mountains, then if it does become a fight out of the GC boys, then... 
you certainly wouldn't put it past Quintana making it three stages, would you? Sure not, and I think uh, he's going to be a real danger one here. And uh, you know, if uh, if it comes down to the uh, final kilometer kilometers and a half and they are together the bigger favourites and there is the stage victory up to, uh, to go for uh, Quintana will you know really try and, uh, try and take it but uh, if they start going a bit further out I think there will be that you know the marking process and tactics will be pay will be played out here and uh, that's where I think uh, Pozzaviva have the advantage he's a bit further off in the general classification uh, Aru and uh, some of the other ones who are a bit closer in general classification, uh, Uran, of course, I think they will be you know, more closely marked uh, by our, uh, our race leader, our pink jersey. So it's going to be an interesting one, but we'll have to wait and see as we get closer to the climb here because the advantage for the uh, breakout in front is, uh, is substantial at the moment, six and a half minutes. So if that can grow a bit more, who knows, maybe there's somebody capable of just holding on out there uh, in, the, in the breakaway. It's a big, big ask. Still 10 kilometres to go before we hit the valley. The town of Ovado. They've erected these big gates. Welcome to Hal. There's a big uh, portrait and painting of a devil that somebody's put on there. The locals really have embraced the fact that they're now the centrepiece of the Giro d'Italia in the last few years. Interesting as well how often this climb's going to be used now. And, whether it's going to be a case of overkill and we're going to see it every year or so. We've had a rest since 2011. There was a lot of criticism after that Monte Crossi stage. I think they didn't want to touch it for a while, not to scare off any big riders, but it's come back this year. And, of course, a lot of big riders might see that, Sean, and think, oof, not sure about the Giro this year. Um, well, uh, that is uh, something they have to consider, the organisation, that uh, you know they don't have... Uh, those climbs uh, too often and uh, it's the same with the other big tours as well they you know they drop it out for a year maybe two years and then they come back and it depends on the route as well what way the route is going uh, around and if it's uh, if it fits into the uh, to the route uh, you know in the in the in the, st in, the st in the stage as well then you know they will take it in but uh, interesting to see in the next number of years how many times over the next five years for example how many times will we finish up here well, we had it in, uh, of course, 2003, 2004. And then later on. 20k to go, 6 minutes and 48. This is Wellens now on the front. Volta on the left hand side as well. In fact, Wellens and Montfort in this group for Lotto Bellisol. Monsalve. We've seen Roach and Rogers up there as well. There's Georg Peidler, 176. Maxime Belkov hanging on as well. Simon Geske is still in there. Buongiorno as well. As is Zardini, who's made it back on. Swelling into a nice little group now. Some extremely fast speeds down here. They've been happy enough to take the risks. Now that Movi Star have got to the front as well, just calming things down behind, we're seeing this gap go out to almost seven minutes. Once again, Zonkolan is such a monster, though, such a mighty mountain, that we're not particularly sure how much could be enough. We'll be in pink at the end of the day. The red jersey, that fight will go out tomorrow. Of course, if Quintana takes pink, he'll take white. And the blue jersey, well, that has already been won by Julian Arredondo. Dario Catalo can mathematically get very close. But I think he can only get within four points or so of Julian Arredondo with all that there is to come. We're almost seven minutes now, and this group behind looks as though it has had quite a few more riders rejoin it. Absolutely decimated towards the top of the climb. Yes, and uh, it is at the going out. As we can see here, there's uh, quite a big peloton um, with race leader. 
In the front as well, we have 17 riders, I reckon, there in that uh, group. So there's a, a, a regrouping there as well. And um, we can see their movie star are just making the descent uh, as they have been taking it calm and not uh, pushing it to any rate where there is a bit of danger involved for Quintan, the pink jersey. And advantage is growing out seven minutes at the moment. And uh, it, it, is, it is going to continue as we see the... Uh, the peloton come through there, they are very relaxed at the moment and uh, this could grow, what, another two, three minutes before we get to the uh, bottom of, of the uh, Zonkala. I'll leave you with this image of Eduardo Zardini. We're going to go off for a quick commercial break. It's getting closer, the big moment approaches. Almost Zonkala time. Fifteen kilometres remain, five k's of descending until we get to the start of what we've been waiting for ever since the Giro d'Italia started. Monte Zoncolan, and the advantage here for the breakaway is going up to seven minutes and 21 seconds. However, Sean Kelly, we've seen this, yes, a few times before, 2003, 2007. Let's talk about uh, those perhaps being slightly different speeds in different eras. 2010, 2011. We don't know how much the breakaway needs because the breakaway's never made it on Zorkola. Yes, it's a real difficult one to calculate and uh, you always have to uh, count the number of riders in the breakaway as well. If there's a big breakaway, as we have 17 riders here and we've had a big breakaway uh, from the moment they uh, managed to get out of the peloton. So that's going to be a help because you know, riders are able to conserve a bit of energy here. Uh, you don't have to start you know, working on the front as quickly as you would with a small group of five, six riders. Uh, and uh, we will have to see how they uh, make it into the uh, climb in peloton because at the moment uh, it's the uh, pink jersey team, uh, Movistar, who are controlling the situation. I feel there will be a team who will push on. Is seven and a half minutes enough? Uh, it's probably going to grow to a, bit, a little bit more, but uh, not an awful lot now. And uh, with this climb, the gradient uh, being so long, uh, you know, for a five, six kilometers of a very, very steep gradient, how much do they need uh, to hold on out there? It's a, it's a difficult calculation to make. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be a tight one at the moment. But I think uh, some of the riders we have here in, in this leading group, it's possibly that they could just hold on. We shall see. It's going to be a big, big ass. This is something that a lot of the riders won't have taken on before. We have certain riders who have taken it on. We've got riders in this peloton who have won. Basso we talked about. Igor Anton we talked about as well. And I'm here that in just a few seconds' time. We can, we can actually play you an interview that, again, Christian managed to pick up with Igor Anton this morning. Anton now riding at the service of Nairo Quintana. He'll be thinking of uh, certainly doing something different. Last time it was all out for the win. He was the team leader with he and Mikel Nieve winning stages in what was a very, very good Giro for Euskaltel back in the day in 2011. You've got Anton winning then. We currently see the breakaway as we flick back to Anton's team. All working for the pink jersey. Fans on the side of the road. We go quickly back to the start, though. Here's that promised interview with Igor Anton. Well, I think it's very important to be in a good position right at the start of the Zoncolan. But it's not particularly important to be on anybody's wheel. It's hell. <laughs> it's all about your legs. It's all about your legs, what you've got. From start to finish, it's just something amazing. First six kilometers, the percentages are absolutely awful. Really, really crazy. I think the great thing is as well that at the top it's going to be full of people, but for us it's Nairo as a leader. It's so nice to have that, and I'm really looking forward to it. He said that before, that's because he's won on the thing, but he might be in a world of pain halfway up. It's that sort of day-to-day. Uh, -day. Going through Pizaris, nicknamed the town of clocks, as you can see. Manufactured clocks for over a century. A couple of sundials, monument clocks as well. But it's time of truth. 
Time of truth for everybody out there on the road, whether you're in the breakaway, whether you are fighting for the pink jersey, podium places, top 10, or even just to make the time limit. This is a day when it's each man against himself, against his rivals, and more importantly, against Mother Nature, against the big mountain, the might of the Monte Zoncolan. 11.2 kilometers to go, and the breakaway are a kilometer away from starting the climb. What's going through your mind now, Sean? Does it start to loom over you? Well, uh, first of all, you have to, you know, uh, see how you're feeling and that's uh, something as a rider you know um to a certain extent if you're um if you're feeling good first of all in the morning times when you wake up in the last number of days it's not just this morning it's the last number of days uh, if you're feeling good you feel uh, that you've recovered quite well and out on the road you're performing pretty well well you know then you're looking forward to today if you're a rider that can do this sort of uh, climb and this is you know the real pure climbers uh, sort of finish here and uh, if you're in that category well then you're looking forward to this uh, to this final and when you're up there in the action uh, as we heard you know you go, you go through the pain but when you're fighting for something you're fighting for a victory you don't really really feel the pain quick break for us and then it's zonkolan time Leave all hope behind. These are the gates to hell. Monte Zonkolan begins for the breakaway. Those behind with Movistar, the race leader, are waiting, waiting to arrive. So the gradient begins. It gets tough fairly straight away. 9.2 Ks to go, and you can see already up to 11.4%. Gil Pridler is the first man up there, and Sean Kelly. We're going to see certain riders who don't have the legs shipped away straight away. Yes, I think we will see the weakest uh, just getting uh, spat out the rear. And uh, we can see um, the man from uh, Giant Shimano, uh, Priedler. He's just uh, setting a pace and they're all uh, certainly afraid to start pushing too early. But again, you know, the advantage just under eight minutes uh, on the peloton. It's an interesting one because they will be thinking, well, you know, it's possible to hold on here. And uh, uh, so they're in between, you know, um, uh, pushing on too early. And if you do not push on, well, then uh, the possibility of getting caught in the final number of kilometres. That's going to be the calculation they're working out at the moment. Team directors will be, you know, reeling information. As we see, Wellens here, he's going to push on. And, uh, you know, he is certainly a one in the last number of days we have seen him. He's very aggressive and finishing real strong. Seven minutes and 57 seconds, so less than eight minutes on the climb. I want to put you under pressure now. Is that enough of a gap? Well, again, it will depend on what happened in the earlier uh, slopes. If there's somebody who wants to really go for this back in the peloton, you know, the stage victory, and they put a, a number of riders, like AG2R, for example, they have the manpower there. You know, they have a few riders. Uh, we did see, uh, you know, Montaguti and uh, uh, the other ones, the uh, uh, Villamos, for example. If they start setting the pace real fast in the uh, peloton, well, then, uh, you know, this, this adventure will come down. But I think we could see somebody with the breakaway holding it. Who better to welcome them to hell than Diddy the Devil himself? He's on the side of the road, he's jumping up and down like the crazy man he is. The outfit's on the forks there. He's got the pink tinge on the fork as well. Who is going to be punished the most? With Cataneo here. Lampy Rider, just taking it at his own pace. Already on the 11.4% gradient. In fact, the average of the first couple of kilometres is 9.1%. In the meantime, those behind are approaching Ovaro. The hardest way up the Zonkolan. Two roads up there. It's hard even for the cars. So we're seeing a mega form, a quick step on the left-hand side, and Sean, it's a big, big moment about positioning now, isn't it? Yes, well, uh, as we heard uh, from you know, the uh, eager Anton, he said that the positioning is very important, and you can see why, because the gradient, there's going to be problems for some riders, you know, making gear change and not doing it correctly, and then, you know, they're going to start falling over in the steep section. So to start in the front is very important here because of the gradient. And the road also, as you get further up, gets, you know, quite uh, narrows down a lot, so positioning is uh, real important. Slovenian fans remember the proximity rather of Slovenia to this region. It's only just over an hour's drive here. Not even that for tomorrow to Trieste. It's right on the border. So a lot of Slovenian fans expected. 
This is Tim Wellens for the Belgians. And now we're getting all sorts of teams trying to put their leaders in the right places. Pace is going to be very, very high at the bottom here. Pink jersey, fourth way at the minute, perfectly placed. This is the army of motorbikes that we expect to see. The car's not allowed up here. Even the jury, a lot of the jury, a lot of the race directs are going to be there. Sean, it's such a difficult job today. Just think of all the cameramen, all the moto drivers. They have a huge responsibility on their shoulders here to keep things going and keep themselves and everybody else safe as well. Yes, well, it's going to get a bit hectic, uh, first of all, with the um, service being done by motorbikes, as we mentioned in that final eight kilometres, with the mechanic uh, you know, going on the rear of a motorbike uh, to uh, service his team. And then you have you know, all the motorbikes, uh, the camera motorbikes, so there'll be a lot of motorbikes there but it's better than having cars there because as we said if there's a problem with a car and uh, it just you know has to stop to get moving again it could block everything on this climb where with the motorbike at least there's a bit more space Peloton about across the bridge in Ovaro 8.2 kilometers to go for the break 735 is the current gap but there is a long long way a huge 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 fight to go Mod did Zonkolan. And look at this. Through the first town on the way. That's where it starts to get harder here now. Very, very close to that 20 to 22% section. In the meantime, Quintana's making sure he's there. Arashiro has drifted back. Kelderman's wanted to be in the right place as well. Fabio Aru is about 15 to 20 uh, bike lengths down. There's Hondo. Who was in the early break. Look at this for a fight for positioning. Seven point seven kilometers to go for the break up front. Peloton in the meantime about to hit the slopes of Monte Zoncolan. Through the town of Ovaro right now. This is where they have the gates to hell up. This is the day now where the legends are made. Heroes ensure that their name in this sport of cycling lives on for eternity. Monsalve. For those whose job is done, it's about taking the climb at their own pace. Again, this is a part of the race we will not see. There are the gates. La Porta dell'Inferno, the gate of hell. Brilliantly done by the local organisers and the towns. Basque fans are on the side of the roads, and Sean, part of the race we won't see. Gruppetto at the back, it's going to be horrible for them. Yes, it is going to be horrible, and, um, you know, Gruppetto doesn't work here, as we can see. Well, here. all this, and this Deep. is very, very early. Naido Quintana and Movistar, what the right position. They have taken a lot of time already on everybody else. Wow. Not sure we expected that. Quintana gets on the radio almost to say, what do you want me to do here? Yes, I think he's... Um trying to make contact with the director sportif his teammates are really pushing on here and you know pulled an advantage out from the front of the peloton but he doesn't want to uh, seem to go on he's just uh, knocking it back a bit and of course with this climb being so steep and uh, so long i think he feels that it's too early and a danger to go at this point that he might pay for the run well a bit of uh, cold blood quickly thankfully to the head for him rest of his rivals Will have had a minute's panic. But they certainly got the positioning right. Well, it's uh, it's a great position to be in. Two teammates in front of you, you know. And as we see here, it does you know reduce quite a lot the road. It's and a narrow road as well, isn't it? Well, it is very narrow, and that's where we could see back in the peloton there was a real sprint to get onto the climb in a good position. We could see so many teams trying to get their general classification men onto the climb in the first 10 or 15 of the peloton. Already on the lower slopes, the peloton is being distanced, split up all the time. What do we do? They're having a listen, having a chat. Naido Quintana behind us, looking to make sure he's in the right gear. He's certainly got time to do that. Now, Robert Kiszelowski, the man in the Croatian Champions jersey, is on Naido Quintana's wheel. Roman Sicar is there. On his wheel is his team captain, who is Pierre Rolland. Kiszelowski has time to make up, as does Kelderman. A lot of these young guys who have never ridden this climb before, it's going to be so interesting to see if anybody chooses to try and bang their fist on the table early on and say, OK, I'm going to take this on. They may well pay for it later on.
Yes, well, unless you're feeling real good and uh, you're on one of these super days, which uh, riders, you know, do get uh, during the career on a number of times where you have a day where you feel so good and uh, that's the time you can make the mistake also because you uh, take it up too early, but then you can pay the price uh, later on. So always the calculation is to wait until, you know, you're at a point where you're pretty sure you can make it and uh, when you go into the attack. And on this one, that is a difficult ca calculation to work out. Vladimir Gusev on the left-hand side, just drifting away from Yuki Beppu next to him. Steve Morabito as well, whose uh, form has faded late on into this Giro d'Italia, I have to say. 2-2 two two there is Chris Jensen. 1-2-6, Jose Errada for Movistar, his job done. Andrea Amador. Job to be on for Astana. Support for Uran on the road there. Aru as well. How is Aru going? That's the question. Aru wearing the white jersey today, remember? Looking after it for uh, Naido Quintana. Borobuzic. He might get a few more pushes all the way up to the top there. Lots of Slovenian fans for him. 16.4% for our breakaway riders. They're on the hardest part of the course, approaching it very soon with 22% to go. 9.6% is the gradient for these guys. Lower slopes. There's Paolo Tiralongo popping his head out the left. Another man we haven't seen too much of. Second mountain wins before. Doing a job though for Fabio Aru here, who's on his wheel. Aru in the white jersey. What has he got today? What is Aru made of? Is it going to be another day of legends for him? The cameraman chatting. Which are they going to get? Who are they going to look for? It's a hard job just for them as well. Simon Gesture, oh, it's ramping up now. Of course, Sean, it's so hard here from a technical point of view. You've got to think about weight distribution as well, because, of course, you get on the pedals and that back wheel might start to slip a little. You sit down, but distribute the rate wrong, and then the front wheel's going to start to lift up, isn't it? Yes, well, it's uh, going to be a difficult one to uh, stay in the saddle all the time, because with the gradient, when it kicks up to that 22%, almost impossible uh, to stay in the saddle, unless, you know, you're a rider with real power sitting in the saddle. Some, come, some can do that, but most will have to get with the saddle quite a lot when we, when we get into the steeper sections, and, uh, yes, uh, when you're out the saddle, you can have a traction problem. Thank God it's wet here, be or dry, sorry, if it was wet, well, then that would be a major difficulty for the riders. Oh, we had a marriage proposal yesterday. Simon Geske expecting something here. Congratulations, by the way, to Jos van Enden. She did say yes in the end. He had it confirmed. So Geske at the front, Pride behind. Number 34 there is Francesco Bongiorno. Franco Pellizzotti in the white and blue. Both Tinkoff Saxo riders are there as well. Roach Rogers alongside the man from Colombia, who is, of course, the man who's been out there for quite a while, Chalaput. <laughs> Hashtag Eurosport Cycling. Remember all your comments on the Monte Zoncolan. 16.8%, it says here. And again, the riders can deal with these sorts of gradients in short sections, but, of course, it lasts for such a long time as... Uh, We've got our first appearance of the Mankini. <laughs> Didn't know Borat like cycling. <laughs> Deary me. <laughs> well, 22%. And if you can't concentrate on the gradient, well, you've got something else to look and laugh at. At least a smile in the most difficult part of the race. <laughs> Simon Geske, I wonder if he's got his smile and his composure back after that short. 
Well, he's definitely uh, <laughs> continuing on here and um, doesn't seem to have affected his concentration. We can see he's working at it quite well, having a look to see where his team is, uh, is sitting. And uh, back in the peloton, we can see Mobistar are starting to push on and amazing there's still three or four riders there as we see amador peeling off here after doing a big long turn there on the front for a long long time he's got a lot of fans watching from costa rica as andre amador back home and he's doing his best now pelizotti takes it up a lot of fans for him as you'd imagine there's fabio aru and goes for him tira longo has done his job tira longo cannot do it anymore as they hit the 14.8 percent gradient Aru, the man to watch in the white, 41 there in the green and white, is Wilco Kelderman. Climbing with the best at the minute is Francis Mouret, 87 of Francais de Jeux. And of course, teammates as well, remember, as you've had throughout the race, Hubert Dupont and Alexis Vuillamour are both there for Domenico Pozzovivo. Torture all the way on the Monte Zoncolan. There is a long, long way to go yet. Oh, both Geska and Pryor are struggling. Buongiorno still out there. Mick Rogers is the man that remains for Tinkoff Saxo. So bad news for Nicholas Roach. Yes, and uh, we can see the two uh, joint commander men suffering. The, you know, the bigger men are going to have, uh, have difficulty. The, you know, the percentage so steep here, uh, it's, it's, it's going to be difficult for them to keep it going. And uh, Pelizzotti, he knows with the advantage at the moment, they have to just keep on working. It. And at this uh, at this point, with a very steep gradient, you just have to you know keep giving it close to your 100%. Robert Kijelowski attacks. Time for him to have a go. 16.4% onto the pedals. Out he rolls. Time for him to take some time back, maybe. Tenth at the moment, wants to make sure he has that top ten overall standing. For the moment, no reaction from Naido Quintana. Movistar teammates doing their best to monitor it. Igor Anton is the man that just goes after him. And Anton knows what it's like. Winner here last time. Fabio Duarte. Oh, he's got to hang on. A lot of people tipping him today, as we see Jose Arrada looking at the back. And Ivan Basso. 61 there told us the other day that he wanted to be with the best oh and he is drifting sliding already as is rather hazed up 32 is Enrico Battaglin and there are no fine margins if you are not at a hundred percent today Sean you're going to get found out very quickly yes very quickly and uh Already in the peloton, we can see you know, Harish Dal, who is starting to suffer. We see him yesterday losing a bit of time. He had a mechanical problem, we must remember that, but still he lost a lot of time. And I think yes, uh, you know, that little bit of uh, fatigue is setting in there. And uh, when you have that coming in the last uh, day as well, you're going to get caught out very quickly today. 16.2% for the leaders, 164 for those behind. Remember, 22% has been climbed for the first time today on the section of the climb here, the hardest. Remember, the average gradient of this six-kilometer section right smack bang in the middle of the Zonkolan is above 15%. You can see exactly what we're talking about. You look at the left-hand side of your screen, mechanics with bikes over their shoulders. That's how important it is. And it's only really the leaders that are going to get that treatment, then, Sean. Yes, well, uh, I think uh, it's so important for the leaders that, you know, they get... Uh, get service very quickly and the motorbikes is the only way because we see back in the peloton the way it's breaking up already and uh, you know space is uh, minimum here and uh, for the cars it's just would be impossible and so if you're you know uh, out in front in a group the car could be you know a long ways back not distance wise but to get here because the royals are going so slow and they're zigzagging from one side of the road to the other so the motorbikes is the best way of doing it and that's the reason we have you know this uh, uh, this method put in place Belgium fans along the cheer off their own. A mega former quick set coming to the front. Valt Poole's doing his best for Rigoberto Uran at the minute, who lies fifth wheel alongside Domenico Pozzo Vivo. The pink of Quintana's there. Oh, and trouble for Evans. Trouble for Evans already, and that's not looking good for the Australian. And talking of Aussies, well, no mincing his words or his actions there from Mick Rogers. Get out the way. Pelizzotti struggling to hang on as well here. Yes, uh, we can see that Pelizzotti, you know, he gave the effort and uh, tried to just you know, walk away and see could he just uh, get on his own, but Rogers seems to be the freshest at the moment.
Nobody accepted his proposal the first time up. He's going to try again with the main Magyarorza group. Robert Keselowski just a few metres ahead of Igor Anton. Gurka Isagirre is there as well. Quintana, pink jersey. Roland right on his wheel. Pools has dropped a few places as well. Roberto Rand's there, but the big news for Australian fans watching is that Cadell Evans has already been put in trouble. And, well, talking for those behind, Sean, the very, very start of the hardest part of the climb. If he's struggling already, then it's going to be one of those days where you slip, slide a long, long way down the standings. Yes, well, uh, anybody that starts to slip at this time in the main peloton, uh, you're going to lose many minutes unless, you know, you can maybe recover a bit. And sometimes you can go through a difficult uh, patch when there's a sudden uh, up in pace on the front of the peloton, you know, if you're at, th at that time you're struggling a bit, maybe just keep your own pace and come back. But uh, with the gradient so much on this one, it's very difficult to recover. And now, and uh, Duarte as well going. For me, that was Pantano. Still looking for Duarte up here. This is the main group. A feeling that he has fallen too. Kelderman hanging on for the time being, as is Aru. Kizilovsky is there. Harold right at the back of this group at the minute. Rafael Maika in the yellow and blue. Top, top job now, this being done by Zagirre. 15.6% for the leaders. Five Ks to go for them. Still a gap of six minutes and 14 seconds. It's all about keeping it going. Felipe Rogers. Can it be Pellizzotti? Can Bongiorno do something? Or is there going to be a lightning acceleration from behind? And I say that very much in relative terms, because even the best will be riding at 10, 12, 13 kilometers per hour on these steep sections. There's our two leaders. Mick Rogers already has a stage win, has been climbing very, very well since coming back into composition. Looks behind, looks to the left, and there is Bongiorno. Can't be another day for Bardiani, can it? They've been brilliant. Oh, fighting with the bike. But pulls on the left-hand side. They've just gone over the 22% section, the first of them. Quintana with his poker face on. You can never tell if he's in trouble. Keeps the shades on, keeps the lips very, very stiff. And does not move. That's the Basque fans. Big, big hairpin to turn. Zolowski started it off on the smallest of small gears. Oxo Vivo. This is the lead. Interesting to see the gap down to Pellizzotti. In a minute, it's Bongiorno and Rogers. Pellizzotti actually looks like he's making some sort of a recovery here. Gradually yep. making his way back to the front too. Yes, uh, it looks like he is coming back. But again, you know, when you uh, when you make the calculation here, we can see the gradient. Uh, you know, it uh, it looks you know very very little minimal uh, the advantage here. But just to get across that gap, it's so difficult. And if you can put the uh, yeah the, the stopwatch on, it'll be probably five or seven seconds here at least. And it looks it's like it's nothing. And we can see, you know, it's. Uh, uh, Roger seemed to be um, quite comfortable there, and um, Bongiorno, uh, you know, walking away at the advantage over six minutes. So it looks like that, you know, the two or the three with Pelazotti out in front, they should be able to hold on and uh, go all the way to fight out for stage victory. Well, they have six minutes and three seconds of advantage in distance terms. We're talking one kilometer and 400 meters. Big, big turn being put in. The hardest mountain in professional cycling. Pierre Roland now hanging on at the back alongside Bart Pools. Evans is a gunner, I'm afraid. Pots of Evo on the right, Aru in the middle. Uran is there as well. But still, Igor Anton doing all the work at the front. He's won on this mountain, the way he's riding today. And, uh, what he's having to do, he's not going to win today. 
Quintana looking good. Five minutes 55. It's all relative for him. It's all about defending the advantages and the gaps to those out in front. Is it a case, though, that these here in front are going to crack? We shall see. Four and a half kilometres to go. Oh, and Pelizotti's in trouble once again. There's Sean saying, until he makes that junction, it is not a done deal. Look at the crowds here. This is a wonderful sight. The Giro d'Italia being played out right here on the magical, monstrous mountain. <laughs> and Bart Pools just dishing out a little nasty slap of punishment there as years pass, saying, well, you mess with my mate, you'll mess with me as well. Get out the way. We've seen quite a bit of that today. It's not that we don't deserve it, these guys as well. Here we go again. Whoa, well. My Oakley's. <laughs> I thought he was going to put him in his pocket for a minute. Back to the serious stuff. They're hardly moving. Our friend Crikey Cadell, he might have a bit of a wait for Cadell today. Crikey, indeed. Crikey might be the reaction when they look down at the time being lost at the minute. Sardinian fans yet again for Aru. They are everywhere. As are the Colombian flags as well for this man. Nairo Quintana, who still has his Basque rider Igor Anton in front. Torture out here on the Giro d'Italia. The silence of the mountains becomes a roar of encouragement and excitement as the Giro d'Italia brings this sleepy region to life. Not necessarily in the best way. Get off me, he says. But he stays cool, calm as ever. Doesn't let it ruffle him, Sean. No, there was a moment there when the spectator did try and push. Uh, he almost cracked, uh, crashed into the back of Igor Anton and uh, had to, you know, to... Uh, to correct his line a bit, and uh, he's he not too happy there. But again, when he's on a steep section, the little push is always so helpful. But uh, you know, it's something that uh, the, the spectators, as we can see, they're getting a bit over anxious here in places. And it's all he continues to fight now. Aru, are the exertions of yesterday starting to take their toll, or he's just hanging on and hanging on? He's certainly slipped towards the back of this group now. Lots of encouragement for the man wearing the best young rider's jersey. Don't think he'll end up with that on the podium unless, of course, he wins the thing because Nairo Quintana qualifies for that at 24 years of age as well. Look at the effort there. One Jordan's in the green and white. Young Italian rider riding for Bardiani. Three stage wins already for them. Rigo Uran sends Pauls to the front. Time to do a job, maybe. Time to put Quintana under pressure. Here we go. Well, this is interesting. Pozzo Vivo, Roland, Micah and Aru have been distanced. And Tom was done. And Valt Pools has been sent to do the work for Rigoberto Uran now. Uran won't mind Quintana being with him. I'm sure, of course, he'd love to drop him overhaul the advantage and win the Giro d'Italia, but in realistic terms, he's got to put time into Fabio Aru, hasn't he? Well, yes, and I think uh, he's just trying to, you know, do a uh, test a number of uh, things here and uh, see can uh, uh, Quintana, you know, continue on to uh, sit on here in the uh, in the group and uh, it's the only way if you have a teammate there use him and uh, that's what Uran is going to do with uh, pools put him on the front make him make a very strong pace for uh, uh, as, as long as he can and see what damage he can do here and uh, just uh, put Quintana under a test but it doesn't look like that Quintana is uh, having any problems here he's following but if you never try you're never going to know so, good to see aggressive attacking riding Certainly aggressive here at the front, and we saw a moment ago that Pelizotti was still fighting. Certainly he will know the climb better than these guys as we see the attack go. Buongiorno with 3.7 kilometers to go. And this is exactly the moment that Ivan Basso went away from Cadell Evans in 2010. The gradient gets a little lighter inside the last three Ks. He's still on the 15% here. Advantage of 5 minutes and 55 over the pink jersey group. It looks as though the breakaway will probably have their day. 
We've all kinds of dress up going on here, all kinds of fun on a day out. It's not too much fun if you're on the bike. However, it'll feel a damn lot better if you can raise your arms as the winner over the finish line. Bonjour's attack, not successful. Again onto the pedals. Rogers sits down, holds on, fights it out. He's running a great race today, Mick Rogers. Yes, he's riding really strong here. And you can see he's sitting down quite a lot, and that tells that uh, you know he has the gear ratio. He's you know a, a gear that he can afford to do that, and uh, that's uh, so important here. If you can you know conserve a little bit of energy, and when we get to this final two kilometres, it does ease off, and there's little e there's easier sections in as the percentage like goes down to you know five percent at at one moment, and then. In the final kilometre, it kicks up again to around 8%, but Rogers is uh, looking comfortable at the moment, and it looks like that out front with the advantage, they're going to you know, have uh, the opportunity to go on for a stage. Here we go. Quintana striking out of the right. Quintana takes it up with 3.4 k's to go. That pulls looked like he was done, and Aru wants to close that advantage to Rigoberto Uran. He wants that second spot on the podium. Needs to defend his third spot first from the likes of those riders who are behind. Pierre Alon, Domenico Pozzovivo, and Rafael Maika as the Polish support for the Polish rider on the sides of the road. Five minutes and 27 for the break at the minute. Quintana's little push on. Has been uh, taken on again by Vak Pouls. Rigoberto Uran in second position at the minute. Jersey unzipped. I'll tell you what, Quintana's expression has not changed since he got on his bike this morning, Sean. No, well, that is the uh, problem with uh, Quintana. You know, he just sits there and uh, he uh, the expression never changes, and that is always difficult for the other riders. You know, to know how he is feeling if he's suffering a bit. Uh, very, very difficult with Quintana, and he did just uh, when Pools uh, slowed up a bit there. He just took up the pace and uh, kept it going at the same rate. Really, uh, he's not interested in pushing pushing on here. He's just uh, wants to stay uh, with Uran, and um, for the moment, like he's just uh, playing the game of following the second place man in general classification. Pool still on the front. Quintana on his pedals behind, 14.6% for the Maya Rosa group. Lead is about to hit the slightly easier gradient. Okay, it doesn't become easy, it's just relatively easier. Ramps up again, remember, in the final few hundred metres out in the tunnels, but they're going to have the Try the encouragement. We've even got a mountain Malia Rosa here at the front. Brilliant to listen to. Nick Rogers taking it up. It looks as though between them they've managed to really distance Pelizotti at least now. This is Porto Vivo. Time for him to go. One of those riders who's ridden this climb before. Micah behind doesn't know it. Pierre Alain hadn't been to the Giro d'Italia really before. He says he's fallen in love with the race, by the way. Great to hear from a Frenchman as well. You said, Sean, that they're always concentrating on the Tour de France. Europe car have the Tour as their big objective, but Roland wants to come back, and he says, Giro ti amo. No, 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 no. The thing is, Rogers is going to be a bit stronger here on these flatter gradients. 11.4%, you can see. Relatively, it's gone down, and Bongiorno must bury himself to get back on. If he manages it, he's going to have wasted quite a bit of energy. Here's what pulls in the meantime. Distance growing between these three at the front and the rest of the podium favourites. It's looking good for Rigoberto Uran in the meantime. I don't think Quintana's pink jersey was particularly in doubt unless a disaster happened. But it's all going swimmingly for him. And even better for Igor Uran as well. Pozzo Viva on the counter attack. Micah on his wheel. The Italian, the pole. We have the Frenchman, Pierre Alain, in the green. And this is the Dutchman, Valt Pouls. Uran behind him. Two Colombians there, Uran from Antioquia. Quintana from Boyacá. Provincial rivalry, rivalry at the top of the Giro d'Italia, and this is Buongiorno, a victim of uh, a well-meaning but poorly, poorly, poorly timed intervention by a spectator. 
A look at that, Sean. 17 seconds now for the Maglia Rosa group on the Aru group. Really good news for Rigo Bertura. Yes, well, I think uh, we have the, the men of the general classification, Quintana, Uran, you know, the two top men up here in front. And uh, uh, then we have that group of Aru, Roland, Pozaviva, Maika, all together they are just riding and marking a bit each other for the general classification. Every pedal stroke is pain. Every time they push the bike forward, it's torture. Is there a prize at the end of it for Mick Rogers, though? Fights with it, left to right, uphill. And this is Domenico Pozzovivo for Azure Desert. Italian rider from the south of Italy riding for the French team. Micah on his wheel. Aru and Pierre Rollin as well. You can see the army of motorbikes behind. We've not seen a single car up here. We explained the reasons why earlier on. Juan Jordan on the right hand side, the top right still chasing, trying to make up the distance. But Mick Rogers, we haven't got a time gap yet. He looks to be pulling out some decent distance though. Well, once he gets into the final two kilometers, he's going to hit three tunnels. That's where the gradient really does flat out. And if you've got something left in those tunnels, you can give it one final push, Sean. Yes, well, I think when you're out in front. I think, you know, you're just going to... Uh, the adrenaline flow, uh, the spectators, they are supporting you. You're, you know, you're going to uh, really just uh, dig in so deep and you can push yourself much more. And we see Rogers here. We did see there just behind. There was quite a distance. I'd say it's 15 seconds, if not plus, uh, back to the uh, rider chasing. And uh, um, it's going to be a difficult one for Bongiorno to close here. Before, he had the problem there being pushed by the spectator into the back of Rogers. It looked like he was suffering a bit that Rogers had him under little bit of pressure you know when you lose your rhythm like that well then you know you, you drop the morale a bit and uh, to get moving and we could see like he had to make a big effort and so difficult to make it back to Rogers it doesn't look like he's capable of doing it I don't want to take anything away from Mick Rogers he was putting a super ride however Francesco Manuel Bongiorno a young rider under 25 a win today on this would mean that he would be remembered forever whatever happens well, of course, he will be uh, really devastated at the end of this one because, uh, you know, he he was, you know... And that, that's, that's worth a contract to win on Mons Uncle Al. Yes, and to put in, you know, to put in the performance he's done already, as we see, Rogers still having problems here with the spectators. As we mentioned on this one, you know, they just get so uh, uh, carried away with the event, being out here for so long, and uh, it's just getting totally crazy. And there you go, a few choice words. Mick Rogers. Again, the thing is, they mean well. It's just they don't know the damage they're doing. They don't know what they're doing. I think Rogers certainly does. 1.8 k to go. Look at the pain on his face. 13.6% here, approaching the first of the tunnels. This is Buongiorno. How many seconds behind, though? That's the question. Looks to be struggling. He's fighting with himself as well as the bike and the gradient. Peter Seri coming back from the breakaway. Let the former quick step now have three men here. Five minutes and 12 seconds. It's not going to be a day for them. And it looks as though we're going to have our first ever breakaway win on Montezoncolan. Well, that's uh, our friend from uh, just a few moments ago. He might be well advised to just get his face off the television for a while, I think. There will be a lot of angry people out there. Peter Seri doing his best. Every little last ounce of energy given to try and put Maido Quintana in trouble. <laughs> Pozzo Vivo. This is going to hurt. This is really going to hurt. Unless you're Maido Quintana, one hand in the pocket, there you go, it looks comfortable. Looks extremely comfortable. 11.4% for them, 10% now for Mick Rogers. I wonder what sort of information he's being given here. Well, Jordan is still on the chase. Of course, he will not give up until the end. And remember, there's a huge, giant screen at the top. So whatever Bon Jordan does, he comes out of that tunnel, he's going to get the reception of his life, isn't he? Yes, well, I think... Uh... They will all get you know, a huge reception here. And uh, when you come up uh, very much in the front of the uh, race, uh, 
a huge uh, applause for everybody and as the group ethic will come through uh, a long long time off uh, they will be you know get great support here that is the sort of mountain it is the Zonkalan is just you know becoming the monument of Giro as in the other tours they have you know the uh, their own monuments so we've had work being done riders burning themselves out Peter Seri being one of them Mark Pools being the other behind Uran six jersey now zipped up. Quintana in pink on his wheel on the right hand side. The group that's chasing them that is losing time all the time. 23 seconds back now. And from a mega farmer quick step, we've questioned their tactics. This is where it all comes together for them. So last kilometer for Mick Rogers. Rogers takes the flam rouge. into the tunnel and look at the distance down here oh he's got this one in the bag Buongiorno is a long way back now resistance broken spectators got a lot to answer for and Mick Rogers is going to go on to take the stage win fight now is for second with Peli Zotti gaining on Buongiorno Put some big names in the breakaway today. Buongiorno, not one of them. Yes, we would have said Mick Rogers, Pellizzotti, extremely big names in the world of cycling. For Buongiorno, it was a chance to show that a new generation have made it. A fantastic opportunity and a catapult to fame. This is the fight for pink going on behind. I see a real advantage. As you saw, just a question of meter, Sean, could, could translate very, very easily to almost 30 seconds. Yes, and uh, we can see uh, Pozovivo is doing a really good job here. He's the one who's securing the pace, uh, you know, back in the in the group of uh, the other general classification men, Aru, Roland, Mike, he is the one who's riding on the front here. And uh, we can see there that there, there's a little bit of, you know, uh, tactics being worked here for the uh, the general classification. Pure Law is starting to lose a bit of ground there on the other uh, the other three riders at the moment. But uh, up front, I don't think that they're going to have any uh, success in putting Pozovivo in difficulty, the uh, Omega Farmer quick step men. Out of the tunnel and into the natural stadium of Monte Zoncola. And look at this. Thousands of people ready to welcome home a hero. Mick Rogers, yes, he's had a little bit of luck on the way with that fan interfering with things for Buongiorno, but it has been a heroic ride. He's going to add his name to the list, two-time Simoni. Remember, Basel won here in 2010. Anton last time up. This time it's going to be Mick Rogers and a chance to take all this in. This is a wonderful sight, Sean. Yes, this is... Uh... Amazing, and uh, it's something that we talked about in the beginning of this year, went right through, and uh, it's living up to his expectations. Wonderful, absolutely wonderful signs. Pelizzotti into it as well. Gradient actually does ramp up in the final few hundred metres again. Gets extremely steep. Pelizzotti has got Buongiorno, and Pelizzotti is making a comeback. What does he have left here? 350 metres for Pellizzotti. In the meantime, Mick Rogers can see the finish line in sight. Well, more people than I've ever seen up here. The snow's still around. In the meantime, it's broken up behind. We've had attacks. Well, great work to get back on. Port Sovivo's done it. Ardo's not far away. This is Mick Rogers, though, and this is going to be a fantastic moment in his career. Yes, he's had his troubles. Yes, he's had his problems. Former three-time individual time trial champion. 75 metres to go for his second ever Grand Tour stage win. Turns the famous corner up the hill. A kiss to the ring and Mick Rogers does it. That's number two. And it's number five with a five-star performance on Monte Zoncolan. And the fifth ascension up belongs to Mick Rogers. What a day, what a day indeed, and Mr. Tinkov himself waiting to take on the glory. So, Pelizzotti, a quick nod to the fans who are out there to support him. Von Jordan is going to get all sorts of noise as well here. Everybody's a hero on the line. 
Peli Dotti already shaking his head, wondering what might have been. He's riding at home. Not the first time up this man over him. And Franco Peli Dotti, an extremely popular man to come across in second place, but lamenting what might have been. The same with young Francesco Bongiorno. Super ride from him, Sean, and it is a case of what might have been, huh? Yes, well, it will always be um, if, if, you know, if not and if this and if that, and uh, that is going to be the problem. But he, I think uh, he looked a little bit in difficulty there because Pelazzotti coming back and uh, just, you know, taking a couple of seconds from him. Rogers looks uh, looked the strongest, but again, you know, we'll always be uh, making the calculation if. Another acceleration forward. Nicholas Roach, he will have heard on the radio surely that it is time to celebrate at the top here with Mick Rogers winning. Roach has done his part and played his part. Tinkoff Saxo showed it was a good break to be in. He's going to come in one minute and 34 down, absolutely tired out, just in front of Brent Bookvolta. But Roach is off to celebrate with his teammate. Here's Maxime Montfort. Good ride from him, just as uh, Chalaput crosses the line as well. There's Gil Pridler. Great Giro d'Italia from the young man, and look at that, exhaustion. His father's ring around his neck. Here comes Montfort then. They come across one by one on this mountain. We said before, it's not necessarily you who decides. It's Mother Nature herself. Maxime Monfort, good ride from him. Dario Cataldo, hat off to you, sir. How many times have you been in the break? How many times have you tried? How many times has it not come off? Super Giro, though, and a very, very, very well fought one. Gieschia, and then Cataneo. 240 down off the win of Mick Rogers. Is the tunnels we've been talking about? Fabio Aru to lead them on, Pozzo Vivo, Maika and Roland. There's Jonathan Monsalve. Promised a lot coming into this Giro d'Italia. Hasn't managed to pull it off in the mountains himself. So another dig from Uran and Vart Pools. Just fended off that last attack from Domenico Pozzo Vivo. But this is the image of the Giro, isn't it? Colombia coming up to the finish line. Naido Quintana in pink, gaining on Tim Wellens there. It's been about these two since halfway point, really. It's been about Colombia and how fitting it is they should come across the line together. Yes, I think uh, the two top men in general classification, they've you know, proved uh, on a number of occasions, but the, on the, uh, the big, big one today, you know, they're coming in together, they're just uh, riding away from the other ones in general classification, and Quintana, you know, looking very comfortable, never getting in difficulty. Uran, Quintana and Wellens. It's about the pair at the front. Uran on the right hand side, Colombian from Antioquia. Quintana on the left in the pink. Colombian from Boyacá, it is Quintana who's going to win the Giro d'Italia here on the top of Monte Tonkulan. Tomorrow, all he has to do is stay upright on his bike in the final stage, 21 to Trieste. Quintana and Uran, not tested to the peak of their powers in terms of having to go out and win the stage today. Quintana played a wonderful tactical plan. Movistar rode a superb, superb race. But look at this, all the cheers, all the emotion, all for these two men at the moment. Quintana, Uran, 1-2 today, 1-2 the Giro d'Italia. Four minutes and 45 down off the winner. But Quintana will win the Giro. Uran to come across in second place. And of course, the battle for third rumbles on behind. Micah trying to steal a few seconds back from Fabio Aru. Pierre Roland was the immediate rival, and Pierre Roland has come over just behind Aru, so it looks as though Aru has secured his podium as well. Good ride from him, and yes, we must have a word as well for Domenico Pozzo Vivo. Big loser today, Cadell Evans. We saw it coming, unfortunately. He's been slipping and sliding in the mountains for quite a while now. What a day, what a view. 
natural stadium of Modric Zonkolan. Like we've never seen it before with so much snow. This has been another one of those special, epic Giro d'Italia days. What a way to finish the race. And I think, Sean, we've seen that in the end, the strongest in terms of the general classification has come out on top. Yes, I think uh, certainly the two strongest men and uh, Omega Farmer Quick Step, you know, just try to see could they put Quintan on the difficulty, but no, nothing at all. He was just sitting there and following and, and uh, never seemed to be in difficulty. But uh, they did try. And, uh, you know, the two top men in general classification just uh, riding away from the others. And we could see that rivalry uh, for the third place, fourth place, and so on in the general classification. A little bit of, you know, tactics being played and uh, no change in the top five, I reckon, in the, t in, in the overall positions. We'll be looking for the time gaps to this man. Cadell Evans fighting, as always, to the last. Wilco Keldam has lost a bit of time today. Oh, but Kijalowski just behind him. But watch out, Kijalowski going to finish ahead of Evans here. The Croatian champion has done a good Giro d'Italia. A very good Giro d'Italia indeed. As you say, how well they've ridden as a team. Again, that particular breathing style of Alexis Vuillamo as he fights his way to the summit. And they have to fight their way to the summit because the team classification, we did see Omega Farmer quick step. They have a number of riders you know, already finished, so that's the reason we could see them pushing on big time as we see Evans battling as usual. Almost seven minutes. It is more than seven minutes now. Evans has lost quite a lot of time today. Good ride from Pantano. Good ride as well from Azure Desert. There's that team classification moment as some of the motorbikes are stopped on the road or allow riders past. Francis Moray, a great ride from him today. He's bested Cadell Evans, former world champion. What's second on this mountain? Comes in almost seven and a half minutes down. <laughs> Epic scenes, drama, the faces of suffering, and the passion of the crowd. It's a Giro cliche to talk about passion, Tifosi. But they've seen this happen today. Michael Rogers winning a stage by 38 seconds from Franco Pellizzotti. Third, Francesco Manuel Bongiorno. But of course, a word for that spectator who caused him to have a very, very off final few kilometres. Nicholas Roach, fantastic fourth place finish. Bookwalter in fifth, Chalaput sixth, Pridler, Montfort, Catel, Logesca. They're all heroes here. Giro stage 20 has been absolutely epic. Mick, yes, Mick. incredible, but that must have been two or three of the longest kilometres of your life at the end there. You can say that again, but uh, it's really worth it. It's amazing. Uh, it's always been a dream of mine to win a mountaintop finish like that. And, uh, you know, uh, Don Colan, it's certainly in the history of cycling and uh, it's an absolute honour to, to win here on top. The crowd was amazing. The team was amazing. Uh, we really wanted to have our last chance at a stage win today. Uh, and we did it, and I'm, I'm really proud. A mountaintop finish like no other, really. Just describe what it's like, even for professional riders trying to get up gradients over 20% for that long. That's steep. That's uh, one hell of a climb, but uh, it makes it all the more, more better. It's, uh, as I said, these climbs, this one, Zonkalan, Stelvio, Gavio, they're in the history of cycling, aren't they? So to win, it's, uh, it's what I think every cyclist dreams as, as, a, as a child, and... Uh, for me, it certainly is a dream come true. Finally, did you have a chance to take in the atmosphere at the top? So many people turning out. It's an amazing arena here. About 20 minutes to go. <laughs> Thank, you Thank you. Thank you very much. You have a pretty point. A dream come true. A dream cracked for Ryder Heistal, though. Loses time again. Haven't seen the best of him since his battling performance on Val Martello. Comes up with Andre Cardozo, who... They thank each other for their company. Naido Quintana, three minutes and seven is going to be his margin of victory on the Giro d'Italia. Fabio Aru, four minutes and four back. Very, very comfortable in the podium place. What a year it's been for him. So for Uran, it's where he was last year. For Quintana, it's a first ever win. And it's the first ever Giro d'Italia win for a Colombian rider. That honour goes to Naido Quintana.